Hi there, and welcome to this video on A-level chemistry for the AQA specification, focusing on the topic of oxidation, reduction, and redox reactions. Hi, I'm Manisha from StudyMind, where we help you to revise A-level chemistry with our helpful revision resources tailored to your subject, your specification, and to you. If you're new here, please make sure to click that subscribe button. And whilst you're watching, please leave any comments down below about anything you're unsure of. If it's your first time watching, make sure to let us know so we can send you our free revision resources. We also have helpful timestamps to guide you through the video. So, let's get started. Welcome to lesson one of one in this tutorial covering oxidation, reduction, and redox equations. This is our only lesson in the topic of redox. In the last lesson, we covered the equilibrium constant and calculated a value for it using equilibrium calculations. Here are the key learning objectives for this lesson. First, we will look at oxidation and reduction. Then, we will look at redox reactions. Here are the AQA specification points for this lesson. Feel free to pause the video now and read through them before we begin. First, we will cover the terms oxidation and reduction. Here are some key terms we will cover in today's lesson. The first are oxidation and reduction. Then, we will look at redox, oxidising and reducing. An oxidation reaction is the process of electron loss. And oxidizing agents are electron acceptors. A reduction reaction is the process of electron gain. And reducing agents are electron donors. Remember the abbreviation oil rig to learn how electrons are gained and lost. Oxidation is the loss of electrons, whilst reduction is the gain. A redox reaction is when both oxidation and reduction are happening at the same time. Here, we can see the reaction between potassium and chlorine. This is a redox reaction. Here, we can see that the potassium has undergone oxidation, whilst the chlorine has undergone reduction. An oxidising agent gets reduced by accepting electrons. A reducing agent will get oxidised as it gives up electrons. The oxidation state of an element represents the total number of electrons that the element has either accepted or donated to get to its current form. If an element undergoes oxidation, then it will increase in oxidation state. If it undergoes reduction, then it will decrease in oxidation state. In this reaction, the potassium has lost an electron to form a positive K plus ion. Its oxidation number will have increased by one, whilst the chlorine gained an electron to form a negative Cl- ion. Its oxidation number decreased by one. Let's look at another example together. Iron forms a number of different ions, for example, Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus. If you think about how these might be produced from iron metal, the 2 plus ion will be formed by oxidizing the metal and removing two of the electrons, leaving us with an Fe2 plus ion. The ion is now said to be an oxidation state of plus two. However, if we remove another electron, this will give us the Fe3 plus ion. Now, we will look at how we assign oxidation states. 
you should be aware of the eight main rules for assigning oxidation states of an element in a compound or ion from the formula. First, the oxidation state of an uncombined element will be zero. This is because it hasn't been oxidized or reduced yet. The sum of the oxidation states of all the atoms or ions in a neutral compound will also be zero. For example, sodium chloride has an overall oxidation state of zero. Next, the sum of the oxidation states of all the atoms in a simple monatomic ion is equal to the charge on the ion. The K plus ion has an oxidation state of plus one. The overall oxidation state in a compound ions is the overall ion charge. The overall oxidation state of NO3 minus is minus one. This is the nitrate ion. Our fifth rule is that elements exist as identical atoms bonded together have an oxidation state of zero. For example, oxygen and chlorine have an oxidation state of zero. Next, we need to know that a more electronegative element in a substance is given a negative oxidation state. The less electronegative one is given a positive oxidation state. It's useful for you to know that fluorine is the most electronegative element, followed by oxygen. Some elements almost always have the same oxidation states in their compounds. We can see a table of these here. For example, group two metals will always have a normal oxidation state of plus two. Our final rule is that Roman numerals can also represent oxidation states and chemical names. An example involving iron is shown here. Here's a useful summary of our eight rules. Feel free to pause the video now and take a quick note of them for your revision before we move on. Our next specification point is to work out the oxidation state of an element in a compound or ion. This is an ion in question one, so the sum of the oxidation states is equal to the charge on the ion. There is a shortcut for working out oxidation states in complex ions like this, where the metal atom is surrounded by electrically neutral molecules like water or ammonia. The sum of the oxidation states in the attached neutral molecule must be zero. This means you can ignore them when you do the sum. This means that the compound we've been given here is an unattached chromium ion, Cr3+. This means its oxidation state will be plus three. Pause the video now to attempt the rest of the questions on your own before we reveal the answer. The answer for question two is plus five, whilst the answer for question three is plus three. Again, pause the video now to attempt these questions on your own before you reveal the answers. The answer for question four is plus five. Question five's answer is plus six. And the answer to question six is plus one. Our final point here is to learn how to combine half equations. You should be able to form an overall redox equation by combining two half equations. A half equation will tell you whether reduction or oxidation has taken place. For example, if electrons have been lost or gained from the elements involved. 
Let's go through a method to form redox equations. First of all, write the two half equations for the reduction and oxidation reactions that take place. Next, ensure that both the half equations contain the same number of electrons. Finally, we can combine the half equations to make a full redox equation. Remember to cancel out the electrons on either side as they will be the same on both sides. Let's attempt this practice question together to apply the rules we have just learnt. Pause the video now to try it on your own. Here's the answer. We'll go through it together step by step. First, we need to write out the two equations for reduction and oxidation. Here, we've got one for chlorine and one for iron. The chlorine has been reduced, whilst the iron has been oxidised. Now, we need to make sure that both the equations have the same number of electrons, so we will balance them out here. As shown, we've included a 2 in front of the iron equations to balance the electrons. Now, we can put the two equations together and cancel out the electrons on either side, leaving us with our final answer as shown here. We've now covered all the learning objectives for today's lesson. Feel free to skip back through the video and re-watch anything you feel unsure about. We've now completed Lesson 1. If you liked this video, make sure to catch our latest videos by subscribing down below and leaving a comment on a topic that you'd like to see a video on. Click here to watch more videos on our series of A-Level Chemistry or visit our website studymind.co.uk for past paper compilations by topic and specification.